สวัสดีครับ Hello everyone Hello Hi Hi We now waiting admitting everyone Good morning everyone Welcome to Lead to Webinar Okay Welcome to Lead to Webinar We are trying to admit every single person here um, for our first ever uh, webinar right from Lead to Okay uh, All the participants are here. All right, and welcome. Okay, can you okay. Right. Okay, okay. Okay, right. All right. We are now waiting for our um, participants to be here. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Wow. Wow, good morning. We have our colleagues from Vietnam as well. Uh, hopefully there are, there will be more people coming in or, right. Okay. So many people are coming in. All right. Yes. A bit of waiting. We're waiting for friends and colleagues from around the world, especially Southeast Asia. Right. Yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. Okay, welcome to lead two. Uh, right, 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 right. Hmm. All right. Feel free. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, we are about to start our session very, very soon. So please be patient. Um, Okay. Right now we have our speaker ready, we have our director ready, and now we are waiting for our audience to be right here. How are you? All right from around the world, how are you? Ah, there's an audience from the Philippines as well. Hello, Cliff. Hello, Long. All right. And we have our colleagues from Thailand as well, right, for our first special seminar, right, on um, on a very special event right here during the COVID-19 situation, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, it seems the director is a little bit out. Okay, no problem. We are, we are admitting every single person. If you are here already, please be patient a bit. Our speaker is so ready to uh, deliver her expertise to you guys, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, right. Mm, so good morning. Uh, let's wait for about a couple of minutes and then we can start our session. Okay, start our session. online. All right, guys. Uh, good morning again from Thailand and um, welcome to the first um, ever lead to um, research webinar today, right? Um, a very special occasion during the time. Um, um, let me tell you a bit uh, a bit about the program today. T today's program is going to be the talk by Dr. Palapakata Yud, right? Um, on the Pejorative for Academy and what we need to consider. And then uh, we will have some Q&A session. So uh, feel free to ask or feel free to drop in any text at all. Uh, so we can ask our uh, speaker to deliver or give you any clearer picture on, on what Pejorism is all about, right? And um, please also check out um, Lead to Webinar. Every single month we do have every talk every month all right so on on research related topics so if you are interested in a particular uh, topic at all please feel free to to join us okay check out our facebook lead to facebook um we will announce um all the lead to webinar every single month then right so with no further ado then um i think it's uh, it's better to uh, welcome right welcome our uh, director of the Language Institute to deliver um, the opening kind of like welcome remarks for everyone. 
right? Please welcome um, Associate Professor Dr. Sukhong Tanking Sirisim, right, on his Zoom uh, Executive Lead Team. Right? Thank you. Please welcome. Uh, good morning, Rodina Club, everyone. So, good morning, colleagues, friends, you know, from Thailand, from the Philippines, from Vietnam, from anywhere in the world, okay? So, as the Tan Wonton mentioned, okay, this is the first uh, free webinar, okay, being delivered, you know, by the Language Institute of Thomas Sad University. Okay, so it's a good opportunity, you know, for all of us, you know, to be here this morning, okay, to, to join, right, you know, this useful, right, webinar. Okay, so I hope that, you know, we're going to learn a lot, you know, from our guest lecturer this morning, okay, Dr. Palapa, right, you know, from uh, Ratchamangala University of Technology, Sivishai. Actually, you know, she's been our friend, you know, for mm, some time already, okay, so she's going to contribute a lot, you know, to this webinar. I think that, you know, plagiarism, you know, has been a big problem, you know, for decades, okay? We are aware, you know, of what it is, okay? We know what it is and we know what it involves, okay? We know what it entails, okay? But, you know, we still need to raise more awareness, right, among our faculty members, our colleagues, right, and our students, okay, so that, you know, they can avoid plagiarizing because, you know, once we are caught plagiarizing, okay, the result, you know, can be so detrimental you know, to our career and, you know, to our study, okay? So uh, I believe that, you know, Ajahn Louis, okay, you know, actually that's our guest speaker's <clears throat> nickname, okay, will be able to, you know, to give us, you know, more information about this, right? And then we we, we talk, I mean, she will talk about, you know, what we need to consider, okay, you know, when we start thinking about plagiarizing or, you know, if, whether, you know, we, we, we will do it, you know, intentionally or accidentally, okay? So, yes, you know, I don't want to waste, you know, our time. So maybe let's begin, right, you know, our webinar this morning and hope everyone enjoy and learn a lot, you know, from our guest speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, our uh, director, right. Now, I think it's time, right? So let's, with no further ado again, right, we please welcome our um, speaker of today, Dr. Palapata, uh, Dr. Luis, okay, please. I keep a big hand. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, everyone. And thank you, Language uh, Institute, Thomasad University, for inviting me to give a talk today. And good morning, and thank you, everyone from over the uh, around the world as well for joining this session. In today's session, I'm going to talk about plagiarism in academia. That is a problematic issue, and is unethical in the academic world nowadays. As you all know that we, uh, we can access information from the website or the internet easily. So many people prefer copying and pasting original text on their work without acknowledging the sources. It's interesting that many of them don't know that what they have done is called plagiarism or that is unacceptable in academia. Okay, and now then, uh, let me share my PowerPoint. All right. Have you seen that? Okay. Uh, as I say, now look at this picture. What do you think about it? When I saw this picture, it reminded me about some of my students when they were trying to explain how they copy information from the websites and they were quite confident that what they have done was acceptable. It makes me realize that plagiarism might be common in the context that plagiarism is not taken seriously. And what do you think about it? Anyone has experiences of uh, plagiarism? You can share your experience and we will talk about it. I'm sure that you have experienced that even like uh, with the, your students or uh, on the news, right? Actually, there are many types of uh, plagiarism that we have never talked about. Based on the previous studies, it has been found that many academics have less awareness and understanding of plagiarism because they don't know what plagiarism is exactly. So the question is, how can they teach their students 
to avoid plagiarism if they don't know about it. Then we as lecturers have to think about it more carefully that if lecturers or faculties have less understanding and less awareness of plagiarism or they ignore this problem, what will happen to our students? And this is an outline of my talk today. I'm going to talk about the definitions of plagiarism, types of plagiarism, and what I have found in my previous studies regarding university students and lecturers understanding and perceptions of plagiarism. And then I will show you some example activities that can raise students or staff's awareness of plagiarism. And after the talk, we can share our experiences of plagiarism and we all can discuss how to avoid plagiarism or what strategies that we can use to reduce this problem. And now I have something for you. Before we start, I'd like you to do some practices considering plagiarism in academic writing to check your understanding of plagiarism here. I will give you a few minutes to answer this question. Which example is not, is not uh, plagiarism? Okay, then the answer is example two. I'm quite sure that you all are familiar with uh, this kind of writing style. And uh, as you've seen from the slide, example two, um, the information from the original text has been used and cited properly. Whereas example one and three are plagiarism. As you can see in the first statement, although the quotation marks, you see that? Mm. The quotation marks are used, is copied from the original text without citing the source. And in the third statement, is also copied from the text without citation. Now let's have a look at the second question. Is the example, is the example written paragraph plagiarism? This one is quite easy and most of our students are usually yeah, doing that. The answer is yes. 
In this example, is the mixture of appropriate citation using quotation marks and paraphrasing without citation. Therefore, the student might not carefully consider it as plagiarism. As you can see from the example, there is no citation in the last sentence, as I underlined here. Now let's see what plagiarism is. Many academics and researchers have given the definitions and types of plagiarism differently. I like this one, defined by Piccolelli, because it's very clear and precise. She stated that plagiarism is an object including language, words, and text, which has been taken or borrowed or stolen from a particular source, including books, journals, or websites by an agent without acknowledgement and with or without intention to deceive. And in 2019, Piccolelli has developed the definition of plagiarism, which includes self-plagiarism or recycling sources without adequate acknowledgement. acknowledgement. And with this definition, it can be concluded that plagiarism is copying or using other people's words, ideas, or other people's work and using them as one's own without appropriate citing and or referencing to original sources with or without intention to deceive, including patch writing and recycling his or her own work. I will talk about patch writing later. Now let's consider these example situations in which statements are not plagiarism. And then I will show you the type of plagiarism. Okay, now keep your answer. And then let's have a look at seven types of plagiarism that have been classified by Worker 1998. These are sham paraphrasing, illicit paraphrasing, verbatim copying, ghost writing, other plagiarism, and polining. And I will show you the description of each type with example situations. If you think that these two are cases of plagiarism, yes, they are plagiarist. We will start with sham paraphrasing. Sham paraphrasing is copying verbatim from an original source with in-text citation, but no quotation marks. As you see from the examples, they show some words that describe it well, such as copies one page from a book, or copies words and phrases from various texts with citations. And how about this one? It's called 
elicit paraphrasing. Elicit paraphrasing is paraphrasing sentences from an original text without citing the source. You can see in the example situation that although the writer paraphrases sentences, but she doesn't cite the source. So this case is plagiarism. And however, when uh, information from various sources is mixed, some researchers call it patch writing. What is patch writing? Patch writing is copying and or changing some words or phrases and mixing sources into one's own work as paraphrased without appropriate citing sources. Is uh, is usually found in writing in written work of international students or those whom English is an additional language. It's questionable whether it should be accounted for plagiarism. But some culture, especially in Asia, may consider it as a kind of teaching strategy. And many students in those countries are taught to copy and imitate from original source because they think that is a kind of learning. Next. This is called verbatim copying. Verbatim copying is copying word for word from an original text without both in-text citation and quotation marks. These types of plagiarism is, uh, is very classic and basic. Most people have just known that they can't copy word forward from other sources, but they haven't known other types of plagiarism. Moreover, it has been found in previous studies that many students usually copied words and mixed various sources in their work without quotations and citations. Some researchers and academics called it cut and paste or copy and paste strategy. You can see in the example situations that the plagiarists use information from the websites and copies it directly to his work or copying other people's work, retyping, uh, retyping it and submitting it uh, as his own is also plagiarism. Now let's have a look at this one. Those two cases are also plagiarism. It's called recycling. Recycling is reusing or resubmitting his or her own assignment or academic paper, which has been previously submitted in a different course or somewhere else. From the examples, you can see that the plagiarists reuse their previous work and submit it to another place. And some people might think that they can do it because they don't know that it's unethical in academia. Next. This one, uh, so plagiarism, called ghost writing. Ghost writing is asking or hiring someone to write or do an assignment and representing it as his or her own work. When many people have dealt with loss of workload and they can finish some of their work on time, hiring or asking someone else to write the report or do research might be the easiest way to help them finish it quicker. But uh, this behavior, uh, this one is plagiarism. So some of them know it, but some don't. Although this case is difficult to detect and some cases have been caught and those who were caught were penalized by the university, such as uh, the degree withdrawal or revoking the degree, something like that. And here, this case called other plagiarism. Other plagiarism is copying from another student's assignment with the knowledge of that person. For this case, you can imagine that A finishes an assignment by him or herself and then B copies his assignment. As shown in the example situation, and the last type is purloining. This uh, is quite similar to other plagiarism, the previous one. Purloining is copying from another student's assignment or papers without the knowledge of that person. 
according to the previous example, uh, this one for this case, B copy A, but C copy B, for example. Do you understand that? It's like a kind of uh, student copying behavior. Now again, let's consider this example situation with statement and not plagiarism. So you can type the answer on the chat box. Yeah, someone say one, two, four, and someone say nine, and someone say four. Okay, thank you very much. The answer is number four and nine. For number four, in this case, the writer prefaces by changing and restructuring sentences and cites the source. Although there are no quotation marks, the information has been prefaced and cited properly. So this one is not plagiarism. And for number nine, it shows that uh, the writer summarizes information from various sources in his own work with citation, in his own words, sorry, sorry with citation. So this case is not plagiarism as well. According to the questions earlier, many researchers noted that whether plagiarism has been intended to deceive. Plagiarism can threaten the reputation of nations, universities, teachers, and honest students, as deceptive uh, practices lead to question in relation to the quality of the educational experience. It can be said that an academic institution or an academic integrity environment is an important factor that affects students' awareness and perceptions of plagiarism. And now today, many universities have used plagiarism detection uh, software, such as Turnitin and Akhara Visut to check similarity of the text that appeared in students' work and information on database. And these are some examples. As you can see from the slide here, this is an example of uh, Turnitin Many colors are highlighted here in the text and the information from the websites or databases is shown on the right hand side here. So you will know how much information, how much information is similar to the original text. And this one, okay, this one is Akhara Visut. It has been developed by Jolalongkorn University. And for this one, the university in Thailand can send an email to ask for permission to use this tool. It's free. And now let's move to what I have found from my previous research regarding university students and lecturers' understanding and perceptions of plagiarism. To promote an academic integrity environment at a university, Members in an institution should be aware of a purpose of plagiarism avoidance and shows an honesty and the respect of the authors to the original source by giving acknowledgement or credits. Having a better understanding of students' perceptions of plagiarism could help an institution transform from culture of cheating into a culture of learning. Moreover, as the concept of plagiarism is the Western viewpoint, some students who are from different culture or different countries and not get used to uh, concepts of plagiarism struggled to adapt themselves to this viewpoint. Therefore, they might not know what they should do or what they should avoid in academic writing. It can be assumed that students' context and their culture of learning could influence student attitudes 
their understanding and their intention to plagiarize, including their awareness of plagiarism. When considering awareness and perceptions of plagiarism in academia, Powell demonstrates that, uh, demonstrate the relationship between awareness and intention to plagiarize. Powell stated that students may not be aware of plagiarism because they don't know what plagiarism is. So they plagiarize unintentionally. And on the other hand, if students understand what plagiarism is and they still do it, obviously they intend to plagiarize. Austin explained the theory of planned behavior and plagiarism that plagiaristic behavior is the result of two dimensions intention to plagiarize and perceptions of control over behavior. Intention to plagiarize has been influenced by attitude to plagiarism and subjective norms, which relate to how people in each context perceive what plagiarism is. In contrast, perceptions of control over behavior refer to individual decision to plagiarize. Therefore, raising awareness, uh, raising student understanding and awareness of plagiarism is necessary, at least to prevent unintentional plagiarism. And in recent years, I have explored university students and lecturers' understanding and perceptions of plagiarism. And let's see what I found. Many points have been raised, such as most of them thought that they do not need to preface original sources if the sources have been cited. And they thought that if they cite sources, quotation marks are not needed. Reusing or a part of their work and submitting it to another course is acceptable. And they don't know the case of ghostwriting that is plagiarism. Considering students and lecturers understanding the concept of plagiarism classified by the missionaries, it indicates that most of the students did not recognize verbatim copying. Whereas the lecturers showed good understanding of this category. To raise the student recognition of verbatim copying, the uh, lecturers should inform students and let them realize that the lecturer will take this case seriously. If students copy work forward from other sources into their own work, so they will be punished. Moreover, the lowest mean score of both students, as you see from the slide and the lecturers, was shown in ghost writing. It can be said that they haven't understood the concept of ghost writing. And in other words, they might not know that asking or hiring someone else to write an assignment or a research paper, but presenting it as his or her own work is not an acceptable practice in academic context. To examine students' attitudes towards the factors influencing student plagiaristic behavior, other students or their peer could influence students to plagiarize, as most of students stated that students follow others to plagiarize and they think that the others will do the same. And many students reported that students plagiarize because of their laziness, and they think their written work is not good enough. They do not understand how to cite properly. They run out of time, and they cannot express another person's idea in their own words. It seems like most of the problem are about writing skills. It was also found the four factors of student reason for plagiarism. Those are intention, individual plagiarism control, context, and lack of confidence in their academic writing. In this case, the intention relates to the student ignorance to avoid plagiarism. The individual plagiarism control is about student decision to plagiarize. The context relates to what students perceived about plagiarism from their community or society, and the lack of confidence in their academic writing includes item regarding how they feel about their academic writing, which may cause plagiarism. Now let's have a look at the confirmatory analysis. An analysis uh, of correlation here uh, shows that all four factors were positively correlated 
indicating that the students were of the opinion that all four factors were associated. Specifically, the individual plagiarism control was correlated to intention to plagiarize, the context, and the lack of confidence in their academic writing. Also, the context was associated with the intention to plagiarize. However, there was no correlation between the context here and student lack of confidence in their academic writing. Not only qualitative, uh, quantitative data that I collected, but also qualitative ones from the interviews and open-ended questions. The finding revealed that there are four main factors or four main reasons for student plagiarism. Those are having limited knowledge of plagiarism avoidance, easiness of plagiarizing, pleasure from others, and ignorance. At this point of view, the student lack of academic writing skills was mentioned most frequently as the student had not been trained appropriately on plagiarism avoidance, particularly paraphrasing, summarizing, and citing sources. This could affect student confidence in their academic writing. And most students indicated that they were not confident when they paraphrased or summarized from an original text. Moreover, when the students summarized, they were afraid that the original content may be distorted. Therefore, they chose to plagiarize to avoid this problem. Yeah, uh, when I uh, talk further to my friends, uh, talk with them further, and I have found that the student thought that um, in the text, they have been written, um, but the author write it beautifully, so I don't need to change it. I don't want to change that word. But I cite the source, and it's appropriate already. But actually, it's not. And for some of them, they are still misunderstand, uh, have a misunderstanding about this point. Additionally, social norms and lack of knowledge could be factors that influence student intention to plagiarize. Most of the students reported that the society and the university have not taken plagiarism seriously. When the students or people plagiarize or copy information from an original text, nothing happened to them. Therefore, the student thought that plagiarism may be acceptable in that society. Because when they see other people plagiarize and they got good grades or good mark, they just follow them and they think that, okay, maybe the, uh, they can do it. And the teachers didn't do anything or uh, that's, students who copies other people work uh, have not been punished so they can do it. Actually, it's a sad thing. When asked the lecturers about their perceptions of student plagiarism, the lecturers reported that the student lack practices in writing a summary and paraphrasing an original text into their own work, own words. The student usually summarized by removing some words or changing or copying and pasting the sentences. Or sometimes the whole paragraph, copy the whole paragraph from original text into their own work because they think that, okay, I copy that work from the website or from the text and then uh, give citations on their work and it's okay, acceptable. But actually, no. According to the finding, it can be concluded that it's possible that the student plagiarized both intentionally and unintentionally, but in complex ways. The context of society and the learning community could be an indicator of students' intention to plagiarize, but as a strategic action to complete academic work. Furthermore, Although the students could get advice about plagiarism avoidance from their lecturers, it's necessary to think about the correctness of information that the student receive from their advisor, who were sometimes acting in a ways that implicitly supported particularly 
uh, particular models of plagiaristic behavior. In addition, although the factors of students' lack of confidence in their academic writing showed no correlation with the context factor, the finding showed the student did not fully understand how to summarize or paraphrase and cite sources. The finding is supported by the qualitative finding as the student academic writing problem have been mentioned most frequently. So um, then we have to think about the uh, teachers, how the teacher teach the student about plagiarism avoidance. Teachers not only play the crucial role to encourage and motivate students to have mastery in their subjects. Actually, the Thai qualification framework for higher education has also attempted to encourage students to have research skills by assigning independent study within the curriculum. And such skills set a uh, race on high standards of academic behavior. The situation is reflected in the various way in which some university have attempted to solve the problem. And some researchers used instructional activities to solve plagiarism problem of Thai university students. It seems that such studies have not sufficiently motivated students to change their plagiaristic behaviors. And this is arguably due to the practice of academic conduct and scholarship in Thailand being ambiguous, especially within Thai academics themselves. As you see from the slide that many cases of plagiarism have been found in the work of national scientist, head of university medical research center, awarded lecturer or associate dean in the research affairs. Some academics have been withdrawn from their academic position or penalized due to plagiarism, but those cases have been kept secret within their institution because of the reputation or corporate image of the institution. To raise Thai uh, academic awareness of plagiarism, Thomas stated that teachers need to adjust their teaching approaches at curriculum that create an atmosphere of critical thinking, including discussion, problem solving, and questioning, as well as a much reduced acceptance of forms of plagiarism, such as pet writing, which teachers often overlooked because their students had limited English proficiency. But actually, this problem uh, is the problem in in any languages, not only in English language. Some research also shows that most Thai teachers designed their teaching materials by copying some contents or information from the internet without citation or proper acknowledgement, as well as recycling their own work repeatedly without citation. And these are also forms of plagiarism. Although many universities in Thailand uphold a policy for plagiarism with text comparison software to prevent plagiarism problems of students, the knowledge of academic writing with sort use and practices of plagiarism avoidance are extremely patchy. The implication of this on the reputation not only um, individual university but also of the country are clear, which can be said that Thai academics including administer, uh, administrators, policy makers, researchers, lecturers, and students, or even stakeholders need to be informed regarding the academic integrity violations and the seriousness of plagiarism. Without it, academic misconduct affect all aspects of higher education in Thailand. And based on my ex uh, experiences of exploring Thai university students and lecturers' understanding of plagiarism, I found that both of them have not fully understood what plagiarism is. And it has clearly seen in the interview that many plagiarism have been mentioned about. The first one is, uh, for example, some lecturers showed their misunderstanding about plagiarism avoidance that a copy sentence must not be changed to the other words, but it 
need to be cited. And some of them have never known how to use and never used quotation marks in their research paper. As you see the example extract here, they say, I have never known that when we copy a sentence from another source, we can use quotation marks with citation. When I asked uh, the participant further, um, she say she never, she has never known about it. And she said, oh, she thought that quotation mark can be used just only the term, for example. It's also found that most of the lecturers, lecturers did not realize that ghost writing or hiring or asking someone to write a paper for them and presenting it as their name was a type of plagiarism. Moreover, some of them thought that ghost writing is acceptable if it is done via hiring. As you see from the slide, they say, we pay for them, so it should be acceptable. And many lecturers mentioned that the lecturers can use the student's work, but they should put the student's name as co-author. But actually for this one year, they, uh, they, they could use it, but they have to put their name on. On the other hand, some of them said that this can be based on agreement between the lecturers and the students. From this point of view, as a lecturer, we should be fair for our students, right? And respect the effort that they put into their work. As I highlighted uh, on the slide here, she said, I would use the student work as my own with a name of another lecturer. At this point, she will use her name with another lecturer without students' names. It's not fair. And when the lecturers were asked how they teach students about plagiarism, most of them reported that they have not focused on it much. They have focused on the content of the course rather than students' plagiarism. Here. And although many lecturers have not explicitly taught the student how to write their assignment appropriately, some of them said that they gave their students some written examples so the student could learn from them. Actually, it's good to give some examples, but it would be more effective if the lecturers can be with them and explain exactly what they should do or what they should avoid in their work. It will be clearer. To create an academic integrity environment at a university, the student and lecturers suggested various strategies for plagiarism deterrence, as shown in this diagram. Regarding the issue mentioned earlier, a clear regulation for plagiarism of students and academic support services at the university have been suggested the most, especially workshops, penalties for plagiarism, and a clear pattern of research. When the existence of a policy for plagiarism of the university is unclear, the lecturers deal with plagiarism at that discretion. And the students are not aware of the seriousness of plagiarism. So another suggestion falls into the lecturer's attention on dealing with students' plagiarism. It can be said that the lecturers could pay more attention to deal with students' work and make them realize that plagiaristic behavior will not be accepted at all at the university. This approach may raise the student recognition that the lecturers and the university will not accept the students' plagiaristic behaviors. This may have a positive effect on the student's awareness of plagiarism. And many researchers have attempted to find out activities or strategies that could raise student awareness and understanding of plagiarism. And I, I understand that motivating Thai university students learning and thinking to avoid plagiarism extremely challenge teacher, practitioners, and practitioners in Thailand. At this point, I'd like to uh, present you some activities that other researchers used with their students to raise their awareness of plagiarism. 
here. As, um, as you see here, Garland provides essential guidelines to academic integrity. Those are a statement that needs to be related to student interests and lives, including their future career interests. The second one is providing students a chance to design methods of grading and using active learning pedagogy, include, including peer instruction. It can be noted that instructor must show attention to teaching and provide clear learning objectives, which can reduce student stress and cheating on their assignments. Pecorelli and Shaw proposed also proposed seven elements of handling plagiarism in pedagogical practice. They say don't believe in quick fix, in quick fixes, such as plagiarism detection software or only telling students don't plagiarize. So we can give them the feedback uh, to uh, about plagiarism, right? If they copy the text and didn't cite properly, so you just uh, show them and tell them how to avoid it, how to avoid plagiarism. And for some teachers, they think that, okay, in, at our university, you can check your work with plagiarism detection software. So just submit it and then that's it. Give them the mark. So the student will not know, will not never know that um, how well, uh, how good of their writing work, written work. The second one is teach writing skills. As I showed you earlier, and at what I have found, according to what I have found from uh, my studies, that uh, the problem, the biggest problem of the student is they don't know how to preface or summarize appropriately. So the teacher should design a task that suits a purpose of the course. So the student can uh, practice, <coughs> can practice it more frequently. The third one, the frame plagiarism. It means not only knowledge of plagiarism, but also its role. Not only say that, okay, um, what is pl what plagiarism is here, but also you would need to uh, tell them the effect of the result if they plagiarize, for example. Four, uh, have realistic expectation, such as developing students' writing towards appropriate intertextualities, not penalizing when not achieving. So when you are giving feedback is good, but if you give feedback, um, negative feedback, it might motivate, demotivate students to learn. They might not, uh, they might not be eager to show your work later, uh, for example, uh, something like that. So, as a lecturer, we should give them instructive feedback. Constructive feedback, sorry. And else of prevention is what a part of cure, such as providing prompts with argument, claims and support from literature. So it gives them some examples you know, from the literature. Six, teach how to think about writing such as providing practice in the skills required for effective source use. So practice makes perfect. And the last one is accentuate the positive, such as giving into consideration among disciplinary expectations, institutional context and teaching and assessment practices. Okay, then Bentley applies three uh, three concepts to reduce plagiarism anxieties of postgraduate students towards turning in software. The first one is expansion of perceptions, which refer to what students have learned. The second one is experiential value 
which refer to what students have been taught. And the last one is the motivated use, which refer to how students apply what they have been taught in their life. And Bentley's workshop lasted in one hour. For the first five minutes, he introduced the purpose of the workshop to students. Then he spent 15 minutes yeah, presenting how Turnitin software works and the practicalities of submission arrangements. Voting paths were used both pre and post activities to explore how students feel about assignment submission through Turnitin. And his activities were mainly a card, a card matching activity to let students experience how Turnitin report has been interpreted. Participants were asked to sit in a group of five and each of them got 10 cards extracted from Turnitin report. The students were asked to categorize the cards whether or not the report showed evidence of plagiarism. And each game was allocated up to 10 minutes with a further five minutes for discussion and reflection. Powell and Stein also noted that implementing an educative approach on plagiarism avoidance with discipline-specific intervention was effective to raise student awareness of plagiarism. So they equipped students with a broader set of learning practice, including reading, interpreting, synthesizing information from and critiquing a range of academic sources and presenting an argument verbally and in writing. Uh, to increase student understanding the concept of plagiarism. And to, uh, in this work, two important components were focused. Uh, the first one is conceptualization or theory and application or practice. So student prior knowledge of plagiarism were integrated with a plagiarism avoidance strategy to ensure that students were familiar with activities. The benefit of this intervention was that students could learn how to avoid plagiarism in different situations. And in Thailand, some researchers introduced useful approaches for teaching plagiarism avoidance, such as, uh, for example, Banjomani work research. She used instructional activities to solve plagiarism problems of Thai university students. She implemented six plagiarism lesson plans, emphasizing, citing, paraphrasing, summarizing, and quoting to enhance students' knowledge of plagiarism and to investigate student plagiaristic practices in English academic writing. It was found that the activities could improve student understanding of plagiarism and decrease the amount and types of textual borrowing in student summary writing tests. Maybe we can uh, show them the synonym and teach them how to use the synonym appropriately because some of them don't know how to use synonym the, and they don't even know how to find or search the synonym on the website or use the synonym from the, uh, find a synonym from the dictionary, for example, we can, we can teach them. And they Shamani provided a clear definition of plagiarism and its types, negative impacts of plagiarism on those who plagiarize plagiarism avoidance techniques with some example in the Thai language. As I told you earlier, that plagiarism can happen in any language, not only in English. And this one, this work, they run the project in Thai and focusing on summarizing, paraphrasing and citing source. As explicit teaching about the concept of plagiarism is necessary, I'd like to share the workshop that I studied a few years ago. Uh, the workshop aims to raise student awareness of plagiarism, especially their understanding of what constitutes plagiarism in educational settings. I called this workshop, Say No to Plagiarism Workshop, because I want my student say, to say no to it. The concept of plagiarism with plagiarism avoidance techniques and example situations of plagiarism both in Thailand and other countries were presented throughout the workshop. Moreover, the practices and activities on 
plagiarism avoidance in academic writing were provided for the participant as well. And this is the workshop plan. It was a three hour workshop that was held by the researchers, myself, to ensure that the concept of plagiarism would be introduced to students appropriately. So the student can get correct information and understand appropriate ways to avoid plagiarism. A handout was also provided to every student before the workshop started. So they could not doubt what they have learned on the handout provided. And this one is very useful because when I explain what uh, plagiarism is here and let them practice, uh, do the writing practice. As you can see from the slide that I uh, divided the session into two sessions, my workshop into two sessions, presentation 90 minutes and another 30, 90 minutes for practice. So another my, not for the practice session, I let you, I uh, asked them to paraphrase sentences and summarize a paragraph from one source with in-text citation and also summarize paragraph from two sources with in-text citation. And also I let them discuss how different of their written work. And they found that, okay, it's quite difficult for them. Even this, uh, this work is in Thai. So the workshop, this workshop has uh, had been run in Thai. So I asked them to write a uh, summary and write a sentence in Thai as well. Anyway, they find it very difficult for them because they don't know how to use words, even in their mother language. During the presentation, the student were allowed to ask questions before moving the text, um, before moving to the next topic. And the researchers uh, monitored a class and facilitated the participants throughout the workshop. And they were allowed to do activities and discuss their written work with their peer. And I also asked them to do the pre-test and the post-test that is similar, uh, similar to the one I let you practice like in the beginning of the presentation and discuss that uh, to, to see, to investigate the effectiveness of the workshop. And it was found that uh, it's very useful because um, they, uh, after, after the workshop, like two weeks or five, Three weeks later, I met them and talked to them, and they say they still used the handout that I gave them to write their report because they are they were quite scared that okay, their degree might be revoked if they copy from the original text, and they have to do the independent study. So, uh, this is good that the effectiveness of the workshop. Okay, and now let's have a look at this picture. It shows the steps to avoid plagiarism in academic writing clearly. Then the first thing you need to think about it, <clears throat> to think about is, should you cite? Is it quote? If yes, cite it and place quotation marks around the text. If not, is preface or is this another's ideas? If yes, cite it. If no, you don't need to cite if it's common knowledge or it's your own thoughts. Now let's, um, okay. i like you to answer the question again to check your understanding of plagiarism. Like the same question. Okay, now you might know that the answer for this one is number two, because it has, uh, the source has been cited appropriately here. And the word, the sentence here has been prefaced. Whereas examples one and three, there's no citation. Okay, and the next one.
this statement is yes plagiarism according to the uh, as you can see from the last sentence there is no citation here but they get the uh, they get uh, the ideas from the original text. <clears throat> Sorry. How about this one? Which ones are not plagiarism? Do you remember? Good. Seems like you still remember <laughs> this one. Okay, that, that's okay, Chris. The answer is number four and nine. And number four and nine, because it has been perfect and cite the source appropriately. Mm -hmm. Although here, number four, they say without quotation marks, but it has been perfect appropriately with this source. Mm -hmm. And this one, number nine, although it makes information from various papers or various sources, but the writer summarizes appropriately with citation. Now we come to the conclusion. According to the finding of the previous research, it could be questioned that when the lecturers had limited understanding on a low abundance of plagiarism, both in academic writing and the concept of plagiarism, what could happen to students? Obviously, these could affect how the lecturers teach or inform their students about plagiarism and plagiarism avoidance. This could also influence what students perceive about plagiarism. Therefore, the university may take an action on informing the lecturers about what constitutes plagiarism with its seriousness in academia and providing a workshop about plagiarism avoidance in academic writing to raise the lecturers' awareness of plagiarism. Because to uh, to teach students to avoid plagiarism, we should begin with the lecturer. If the lecturer don't know about it, how could our student know it, right? And with luck, lack of practice, students may plagiarize unintentionally because they are unaware that what they have been doing is plagiarism or unethical or is unethical in academic context. However, the student's awareness of plagiarism could be significantly rest if the lecturers have shown their attention to deal with student plagiaristic behavior. You can do it as the lecturers. Like if you see uh, any copy work, yeah, you can penalize them or uh, the common way is ask them to redo that work again or give them zero. If they do it strictly, I'm sure that the student will not plagiarize next time. Mm -hmm. And these are the studies cited in this presentation. That's all of my presentation. And now it's time for discussing and sharing your experiences about plagiarism. Or if anyone can suggest, 
how to avoid plagiarism or what strategies that we can use to reduce this problem, what would be, uh, that would be wonderful and ready for it. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, um, uh, Dr. Palapa or uh, Dr. Luis for your in uh, valuable um, information. Right, during the time we do have uh, some time for the Q&A session. So please <laughs> drop in any, any uh, questions or if you want to like talk with the um, you know, speaker, please feel free to do so as well, right? Yeah, because uh, uh, I can say that plagiarism is a problematic issue and is typical, very typical, especially in the, at the university not only like postgraduate students, but also like undergraduate students. In my work, I uh, did the research with the undergraduate students because if they don't know about it, uh, how can they survive uh, in the postgraduate level? Because some of them have to uh, want to yeah, study in a higher level and they struggled how to write it properly in that thesis. So if you have any experiences that like uh, that would like to share with us, please do so because I also want to know your experiences and we can share. Right. Um, right now in our session, we have some questions as well, right? First of all, um, a, a question from uh, Ajahn Saran, right? So we love to know how could you actually suggest some tips on paraphrasing then? how would we actually do um, kind of like paraphrasing techniques to help our students to uh, avoid plagiarism? Yeah, uh, for, to, to, to paraphrase, uh, the paraphrasing techniques that I could say is you can uh, find some synonyms first, put the synonyms on, and then try to lead structure like active voice to passive voice for example, in English. But in Thai, I could say that uh, the structure is not that, that not similar, but you can teach the student to speak it out, uh, to speak it out, <clears throat> to see how well they understand about the text or, or the sentence and then write it, uh, note it down without looking at the text. So it might help. Right, thank you. Uh, I have another, we have another question from um, Dr. Cliff, please. Um, uh, Dr. Cliff. Right. Yes, uh, actually this is not a question. This is more of Dr. Panlapa said earlier when she talked about what are some of the ways or experiences regarding plagiarism. Is my, is my connection okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is yeah. my signal, it's am clear. I clear? It's clear. Okay, okay. Yeah, in, in our university, what we actually do is we ask our students to act. Okay, it seems um, the signal. Go through to let their paper and yes, and if ever it goes beyond, there is it's above of 10%, then we would ask them to rewrite their research paper. So there is this, it should only be 10% below for, mm -hmm. for their paper theses to be accepted for, what's this? Uh, oral defense to what mm -hmm. Tanlapa actually mentioned earlier about active voice to passive voice. I think another technique here would be the range of vocabulary that our students have. For, for example, instead of the word magnificent, maybe they could use terrific, right? I guess. So, so that could be very, very helpful. And of course, it determines our the level of reading comprehension and the exposure towards reading that our students have. I mean, e even here in the Philippines, it's still the case. Plagiarism is still an issue. I think it's an issue everywhere around the world, as long as we've got students, right? The ones that you showed earlier during your presentation about different scenarios, mm -hmm. 
about plagiarism, even about teachers, right, not having to do with plagiarism. That's really, really true. And I know that it's also happening here in my country. So that's all I can share. Uh, thank you, Dr. Monton. Kanok <laughs> Perpum. All right. Thank you so much, Pat. That's okay. Right. Um, by that, by that, uh, I also have a question concerning the Turnitin as well. Do you have any tips from the teachers um, uh, for the teachers to avoid student plagiarism by using Turnitin? Like any techniques for that? Okay, uh, for in in some universities, we don't use turn it in because we, we have to pay for that. For example, like at my university, we don't have it. So we can, if we don't have that kind of tool, we can use uh, free detective software, such as uh, a cloud visual, as I said earlier, or if you have turn it in, actually you can pay for it, uh, but I'm not sure that how much is it, but it's quite expensive. So. <laughs> Yeah, so when you check it, they, I have heard that someone use like Grammarly as well, but now do, um, I'm not sure that you, you know that. Grammarly is a software that can show you how many percent of the similarity text have been found between your work and your and the data and the information from the database. So you can use it actually, but be careful. Uh, I can say be careful if once your work is on database, they might detect and uh, record it on the database already. If it, and uh, once in, how, how to say, like if you submit your work and they, it has been checked in on Turnitin and it found that you copy 100%, but actually it's your work. You have to redo it all the whole work again and you, might have to be like uh, investigated or something. Mm. Uh, in that case, um, examiners board or something. So it will be very trouble. <laughs> right, um, right. As 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 you might mention as well that you might, there are so many websites for uh, checking the plagiarism. Do you have any uh, particular suggestions on how to help the students? Um, practice summarizing, paraphrasing, or citing as well? Because it seems to be difficult for the students in the first place, right? Yeah, it, it's quite be very difficult. Like the first place, I uh, I have also used this strategy or, or the workshop with the students. The first thing, uh, before teach them how to, how to say, before teach them what plagiarism is, I teach them how to paraphrase first. Uh, you can start with the short, a short sentence and a short sentence to see how, uh, which words or like the, the words they use. And then uh, you can check, you, you can provide a source, provide a source or the text for the student. Let them read before them write. As I said earlier, let them read around, aloud and then talk or discuss with uh, their peers or their friends before they write it down. So it'd be help. It will help, yes. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, we do have um, uh, another question. It seems to be like a lot of people are very interested in, in paraphrasing, right? Um, right, any websites at all, any websites to help, right? Do you have any particular idea? Uh, like what kind uh, of this can be actually the website the website to practice um, to avoid plagiarism right uh, you can go to Cardiff I recommend that one it's like the exercise that I used earlier that Cardiff University you can go through that website and you can practice how to paraphrase how to uh, not how to paraphrase um, to how to avoid plagiarism and to taste your understanding about it as well. So it will be useful not only for yourself, but also for your students. Mm. Right. And also there much information, yeah, much information on that website that you can study and learn. And um, Ajahn Monton, can I answer this question? This, uh, from Shotip. 
really yeah. Right? Then chocolate. Yeah, for jam chocolate. Yeah, how can we detect whether the student work is goes writing? Yes, this one is very challenge is very challenging. Yeah, because ghost writing is very difficult. And many researchers say is the most difficult to detect because we have they were known that who write that work. Yeah, who write that work? They pay for it and then they get that work and it's perfect and sometimes they write it fairly beautifully. Yeah, if you ask them to write and if you monitor them in class, you will see the style of writing. But in some cases, if you give them just assignment and you never um, like monitor them in class, you will never know the style of them, the, the style of their writing. So it's very, hard, I can say, it's very hard to detect. Right, it's truly mm -hmm. hard, right? Um, what about, what about, I have a, my, my personal question as well, like when we read students' writing, sometimes um, it's very hard to detect, um, given that the students have very good English already. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible or is it ethical as well from your point of view that we should actually send our, I mean, students' work to detect uh, through um, Turnitin or any um, plagiarism website at all? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, uh, if I have that kind of uh, um, detective software like Turnitin, I will use it as uh, a tool to detect and to give feedback as well. It's not all uh, that kind of tool like Turnitin or any um, detective software, plagiarism detective software. You can use it as the feedback in to, to teach, how to say, to, to give them feedback. Yeah. The, so they will see, okay, how many percent that they, that you, that work is similar to the others. And then they will paraphrase and summarize it and then submit it again to see how improved of their work. Right. Okay. Um, another is more of the management questions, right? From, uh, Ajahn Bobby, right, our beloved colleagues. Yeah, okay, so um, the question is like, do we have to actually agree with our colleagues first and how much uh, plagiarism we are going to accept or mm -hmm. penalize the students? In yeah, you have to talk uh, in case, uh, if in one course, yeah, because sometimes we teach the student in one course, but many teachers. Yeah, you have to make the agreement with the co-teachers or co-lecturers first that how much or how many percent of plagiarism that we accept but that we can uh accept for example like it depends on the university or your agreement as well because in some university i have known that uh they can accept less than 40 percent but actually 40 percent is very much yeah but if it's less than 40 percent okay it can be accepted but for some lecturers, 10% is not acceptable. So you have to uh, raise this point and tell the learners or tell your students the purpose and also like uh, the objective of your course first so they will know that, okay, it's unacceptable or how many percent, because sometimes we, we don't know the exactly how many percent but if we give them feedback or tell them, okay, this one is not acceptable, this one you have to paraphrase, uh, re rewrite it again, and yeah, give me to check that again. Uh, I understand that it's time consuming. Yeah, right. it's time consuming. We are for us, our lecturers, but to raise the awareness of plagiarism and yeah, to prevent their unethical behavior, so it will be okay. Um, right, there's another question as well um, from our friends, colleague from, from Vietnam, right, learn, right, we normally don't have separate course like to, to do pictures, how do you actually mm -hmm. train students to practice writing to avoid pictureism? Yeah, it's a very interesting question, thank you, Noon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, uh, at my university, we don't have separate a separate course to teach students about this topic as well, but we include it in, actually, 
it will be very, very perfect if we could include this topic in every, in every course, like as a chapter or as a lesson or like the beginning of the, the instruction week of the course or something like that. But for me, I include this work, um, this topic in advanced writing or advanced reading course because we have to like teach them or tell them how to avoid plagiarism. We didn't, we, we asked them to read. Obviously they have to read and also they have to clarify it. They have to write it or summarize it as well based on their understanding of the text as well. And also like uh, when they read, they have to cite to the source because of course is the idea of the text is not yours sometimes. Yeah, so it's my opinion, it's my suggestion. Right, that's a very nice comment, isn't it? Um, we do have um, more and more questions floating into my account. So um, I think um, we, we will have more kind of things like this session as well in the very, very near future, right? And during the time, uh, if you please help us like do the evaluation, how to improve um, our sessions in the future, please do so. Um, I have given the link, I think I've, I've given everyone the link already on the chat box, if you have seen it. Okay, um, right, right, okay. Workshops are needed, right? Right now, I think workshops are needed. Mm -hmm. um, trainings are needed as well. Maybe in the future, we may have a kind of joint collaboration, right? Among many universities, many uh, colleges and schools to um, conduct this kind of like plagiarism training, how to avoid them, how to be expert in, in you know, error free or copy free situation like that. All right, so that's, that's a very nice session then. So um, I think, um, I think it's a time, right, for us to like um, end the session right here, right? Right. Um, and thank you so, so much, right, Dr. Palapa, or Dr. Luis, right, our beloved friends. Um, and can we actually like give them big hands for the speaker today? <laughs> thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. In the future, uh, our next session, our next, um, next, next speaking session of the lead to webinar is again on the 23rd of March. All right, 23rd of March. Um, more detail will be announced very soon. And it's all about publication, how to get your paper published beautifully on Scopus or something like that, mm -hmm. and how to avoid rejection, right, by our expert, expert in, in publishing, right? So uh, please wait and see what we will have for the next session then. So I think it's uh, by this time, can we actually have some photos together, maybe? Right, um, if you please, um, some photos, some um, <laughs> kind of like success um, of the first session. Lots of information, right? Lots of information and a lot of examples and suggestions as well, um, if we can, um, right? Okay, we're gonna have a, a session, uh, um, all right, okay, happy, all right, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we are waiting for our friends, our colleagues to have to, to show off <laughs> <laughs> the first rate. Okay, right. Now, I think we're ready. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you so much then. Thank you so much. Um, very, very successful indeed. And thank you everyone for participating in this session. Right. Um, I, I do understand as well that there are some audience who would love to get a certificate of participation or, or attention. In that case, please email um, your request to me. All right. And I'll give you my email then. Um, Please send your request to me and I will issue a special certificate of attendance to you guys, right? So, um, and we will, we will wait for your next session again uh, to meet each other, right? So um, enjoy the rest of the day and stay safe, okay? Stay safe and um, be lovely, healthy and,
you know, be happy as well, teaching online and doing research online. All right, we'll see you again next time. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. พี่น้องพรพี่เจอกันค่ะค่ะคิดถึงนะคะค่ะค่ะคิดถึงวันกันค่ะพี่น้องค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะหลังโควิดค่อยไปเยี่ยมนะ